This past weekend, we finally got to see some footage from the Man of Steel as Warner Brothers released two teaser trailers. One with a voiceover by Jonathan Kent and one with Jor-El. And the tone was oddly deadly as Catch meets the Tree of Life. For me, I liked what I saw and yet I didn't. Let's start with what I liked. The heightened realism of the teaser trailer, highlighted most strikingly by a Kent farm that looked straight out of the Grapes of Wrath, hints that Christopher Nolan and Zack Snyder's Man of Steel is going to reflect the problems in today's society as much as Nolan's Batman franchise has. People in the middle of the country are hurting, and anyone raised in Kansas would and should reflect that. I read some online comments that said perhaps this Superman would be the most relatable yet, and I found that to be an interesting idea. Now why on earth is Clark Kent a fisherman? This wild departure from the well-established legend of Superman leads me to believe that Warner Brothers and DC Comics have indeed lost the origin rights to the character, or at least feel it's only a matter of time. So one of the reasons we'll likely see so many changes in the movie is because Warner Brothers and DC Comics have to make them. For instance, in the new 52 action comics, Clark Kent was killed in an explosion, so Superman had to create a new secret identity, Johnny Clark, who's a Metropolis fireman. And having to put Clark Kent in quotation marks just feels so wrong, but more on that in a bit. First, why is he a fisherman in the movie and not a fireman like the comics? I was discussing this with a friend of mine, and she pointed out that Christ is often referred to as the fisherman of men, and it seems that once again Superman is going to be depicted as a Christ figure. Even in both voiceovers for the teaser trailer, Jor-El tells Superman he'll be a great leader, while Jonathan Kent tells Superman his mere existence will change the world. Brian Singer also portrayed Superman as a Christ-like figure, and revered comic book writer Grant Morrison drew the same comparison for his popular and well-received all-star Superman. And I admit, it would be fascinating to explore how the arrival of a humanoid being on Earth with superpowers would result in a modern-day Jesus Christ. But that's not the story of Superman. In fact, none of what I'm seeing is Superman, or more accurately, Clark Kent. People new to the material have always seen Clark Kent as the mask, but those familiar with the legend know that Superman is the true mask. To kill off Clark Kent is to kill off the character, and it's as if Warner Brothers and DC Comics have put the S-Shield on someone new entirely which is something that happens in comics all the time, and I could maybe see myself and other fans coming to terms with it. But to change Clark Kent to such a degree that he's unrecognizable seems tragic to me. Clark Kent wouldn't become a fisherman because he's not a loner. Instead, he's always been an active member of his community with a purpose to make that community better. And because he was raised as a human being, he's always sought to make the community better from the inside out, not from the outside in. And Clark Kent has never thought he was special or a leader. Clark Kent is the guy who does what needs to be done not out of a sense of obligation, but because it's simply the right thing to do. It's a quality that can be found in members of the military, teachers, many walks of life, and even in some journalists, which is why Clark Kent chose that profession. Clark Kent is not relatable, he's admirable. To rob him of that and revert him to one-dimensional savior status doesn't ring true to me, and I suspect it wouldn't to many Superman fans. As for the bleak quality of the footage, while it might be realistic, it's devoid of hope, which is what Superman is all about. No matter how bad things get, politicians in the economy can't block out the sun, the very thing that powers Superman. Superman is always supposed to be a bright ray of hope, not just because of his powers, but also because of the optimism and humbleness instilled in him by the Kents. A scientist like Jor-El would never tell his son that his destiny was to become a powerful leader. After all, Jor-El couldn't get anybody to even listen to his warnings about Krypton, much less follow him. An assault of the earth farmer like Jonathan Kent would never tell his son that he could change the world by merely existing. He would tell him he'd have to earn it and to not overstep his bounds. Why am I so hard on DC movies? Because like so many of you, I grew up on these stories and they are in my blood. Marvel has had success because they are faithful to the source material. When are Warner Brothers and DC Comics going to realize that's all they need to do? After all, like any creative person depicting these iconic characters, they are merely renting them for a short period of time before the next creative team tackles them. No matter how talented or visionary Christopher Nolan might be, he didn't invent these characters and doesn't have the right to redefine them. Fans don't even feel George Lucas has that right with Star Wars, and he did invent those characters. What do you think? Be sure to share your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now. I'm Grace Randolph from Beyond the Trailer, and we're kicking off our San Diego Comic-Con coverage in style. That's a good question. Well, that's a great question. Uh, that's a good question, yeah. That's an awesome question. I've never even thought about that myself.